every single day, I still get more new people coming into the YouTube comments, coming into the Twitch chat, saying, I tried out your Bane Occultist League Starter. I've always had bad League Starts in the past, but this has been the best one that I have ever played. And I'm very proud of that, and I want to continue that tradition. It's been a year since my first Bane Occultist build guide, and it's time for a full refresh. I'm going to be doing a full walkthrough here. I'm also going to update the crafting guide in the spreadsheet that will be linked in the description below. Last week, I did an act one through four leveling guide, so you can follow along a full video guide. All the instructions for leveling this build are in the POB, in the notes there. There are leveling trees, there are alternative versions to play this build, and there's a lot to go over. I've spent the past couple of days really thinking about how I can refresh this build, utilize some of the new stuff that we've had in the game in the past couple of leagues, and it is looking better than ever. If you've seen some of my recent videos, you know that I've been toying around with League Studying Poisonous Concoction, but after the 3.18 Sentinel reveal, especially with it being very uber boss focused, I have to go with Old Trusty. For me, Bane is my favorite bossing build in the entire game. It does take some investment to really scale up to like good bossing damage, but at lower investment, you can still, you can kill Cirrus on like three to five exalts. And I'm very confident that's gonna scale up to doing the uber bosses at higher investment. I just love having this reliable, awesome build. That's also this flexible template that you can customize and make your own. We got a lot to go over. Let's get right into it. All right, what makes this build so special? Well, it's a chaos skill. And as you've, if you've seen any of my League Starter videos, we know that the best League Starters are TMTMC, and sometimes Y, which is traps, mines, totems, minions, chaos, and then sometimes some other things. Because of the way that we put this build together using Bane, Essence Drain, and Blight, we are able to stack multiple chaos skills that take advantage of basically very easy to access damage scaling. The number one thing here is going for gem levels and chaos.multiplier, increased duration, stuff like that. We are able to, with just a single unique that is very, very common, this will cost you five chaos, right off the bat, you'll be able to do T14 to T16 maps with literally nothing else. The progression of leveling up the damage of the build is really, really smooth and requires almost no currency or investment. You just wanna level up your gems. When they hit level 20, sell them with a gem cutter. It'll give you back a level one gem with 20 quality. Level those up again. Make sure that you're leveling backups in your offhand. Then we just look for easy to access gear like plus gem level weapons, gem level body armor, plus gem level amulet. Well, you get the point. And this is very, very solo cell found friendly. And in fact, I have figured out some ways that we can make this actually hardcore friendly as well. So this current configuration is my recommendation for a League Start Bane Occultist. As I said, in the POB, there's all of the leveling progression and all that type of stuff. I wanted to just demonstrate what this could look like a couple days into the league. And just to make it very explicit, we'll go over every single little piece here, just to show that this is absolutely a league start situation. Cane of Unraveling, what more is there to say? It gives us increased chaos damage, plus two to level of all chaos spell skill gems. That's really the key here behind this build. Increased chaos damage, we get power charges that will give us mana regen, which is really nice. We get cast speed and chaos damage over time multiplier. Absolutely awesome. It, every single thing on this item buffs our character and this will carry us. I, I've killed Cirrus with this item. Now it is a little challenging for sure. <laughs> the damage will be a little lower fighting Cirrus with a cane of unraveling, but you absolutely can. This will carry you through T16 maps, unlock your whole Atlas, and then you can save up some currency and start going for a bigger weapon. So this is really the number one thing that you're looking for. You will be going for two wands that have plus one to level of chaos gems. Those will carry you very easily into, into yellow maps. And those only cost you like five chaos each. Definitely set up a trade search or, or if this is a little bit later on, if you're in solo cell found, if you're having really, really bad luck trying to get that cane of unraveling, you can do this vendor recipe. A normal wand with two or more quality skill gems with a total combined quality of 40%. Helmet, I strongly recommend Crown of the Inward Eye. This will cost up to an Exalt on League Start, but the price will drop very, very quickly. Or if you get to Cirrus yourself and you kill him, it's a very common drop. He drops it like 50% of the time. So not hard to get whatsoever. This is really, really hard to beat. I've compared this with like double elevated, really, really well-crafted, nearby enemies, minus 12 Chaos Res, all that type of stuff. And Crown of the Inward Eye is just like still better. <laughs> so it, it, this is just basically best in slot. My recommendation here is to go for increased effective curses applied by Bane, but you can go for any other curse effect, Bane AoE, 
essence drain damage, whatever you want. This is just a demonstration of on leak start, no, no enchant whatsoever. For the body armor, I do recommend Cherubim's Maleficence on leak start. This should be very common, very, very cheap. And as you can see, I only have it on five link right now, so it shouldn't be too bad for you. Key here is it has gigantic armor, gigantic evasion rating, and 80% increased chaos damage with a good chunk of life. Now the rings, all you have to do is get some essences of envy, which will give you 34% increased chaos damage for a deafening. Pop that on your rings, which not even on this ring, uh, this ring could be upgraded here, but I have it on an Iolite ring here, increased chaos damage. I have 67% increased chaos damage. Don't forget to use your noxious catalyst. Just regular apothecary's gloves. I don't have any hunter mod or anything on here. Uh, regular Stygian Vise. There's nothing on here that does anything for our build and just regular boots that have really, really nice life, really good res, movement speed. Um, if you are able to get at Ziri steps earlier, that's even better, but these do cost about 50 to 100 chaos on leak start, so I do recommend just going for, you know, nice chunky stat boots to start off. So this is a character that level 97, but I have five points on spec, so this is a level 92 character. I have a single cluster jewel that just has two nodes allocated right now. I did I unspecced the third node. And everything else on here is very, very SSF friendly. Cane of Unraveling, Cherubim's Maleficence, uh, Unenchanted, Crown of the Inward Eye, and everything else is absolute solo self round, league starter, nothing, absolutely nothing. All of my gems are level 20, and I don't have a single awakened gem or anything. This is just a tier 14 demonstration of a level 92 lead starter character. Um, and then I, I really want to just like hammer home how balanced this build is in terms of being able to clear maps, kill bosses, and uh, in scale in a very, in just a very dependable way. Um, solo cell phone friendly. I think uh, especially with the new bossing focused league that we have coming, I am even more pushed. <laughs> towards League Starting Bane, honestly. I think that this is just the nicest bossing build that I've ever played. Now, is it high damage? No. You can get to 15 to 20 million DPS at high investment, but the key here is that we have a lot of control. This is a control mage playstyle. Why is that? That's because we have temporal chains and we have a decent amount of increased curse effect. And yeah, so this is going to be a tier 14 map boss with absolute... You know, we're talking like two to three days into the league, solo cell found friendly gear, um, right? So the key is that we don't have to be near him, right? And I think this is the, the important thing with the build is I can just stand back here. Hopefully he dies, <laughs> right? Um, and the, the key here is it's very, very comfortable for bossing. Because of the duration, especially that we get on this stuff, 4.3 seconds on Essence Drain, five seconds on Bane, each stack of Blight lasts 2.8 seconds there. This is just really, really nice for stacking our debuffs when when we're fighting something that might be scary. That's really, you know, when we have a safety phase, right? Get our debuffs on there, very safe. Get all the debuffs. When something scary is gonna happen, right? We can flame dash away. And for the next four seconds, we're basically doing full DPS with our hand off the mouse and keyboard, right? Or the controller, I guess we get controller support now too. As long as you're able to take advantage of that asynchronous play style and look at all of the encounters in a way that like you basically have your DPS phase. And then when you're outside of that DPS phase, as long as your debuffs are still on any scary monster, you're still doing full damage. And I just, I really want to hammer home that that's the key with the play style. And then while you're mapping, right? The key is you can Bane at full screen and it's very, very safe. Um, you know, as long as you stay away from the monsters, they're not going to get you. Right? So like with this, boom, Bane, and then I stay back, right? And then it's just going to die. <laughs> so the key is don't flame dash into packs. Stay back, stay out of range, and, you know, you'll barely get hit. You'll, you'll not have to worry about dying or losing your XP or anything. And it should be a very smooth and nice play style. As with everything, I always recommend try it out. Make sure you like it. But if you do, I don't think you can go wrong really playing this build ever um you know i i obviously am biased i am obviously someone that is incentivized to advocate for this build as objective as i can say this i have not had more fun and like reliable scaling and being able to take on basically all content in the game 
uh, with any other leak starter. Now, the difficulty with trying to put all of the information about this build into a, a video is I could I could talk about this build forever. I, I really could. I mean, I, this is my 16th Bane video now. I have talked about this build forever. And so I'm going to just give you guys some snapshots here. The most important thing is I'm gonna have a lot of information in the POB. There's going to be a spreadsheet with crafting instructions and different alternatives and all the stuff that you're gonna look for. I cannot put everything in this video. So what you see right here, and I'm gonna name this in the POB like, day two gear, day three gear, something like that. This is my proposal for having a build going into 3.18 a couple days into the league. This is the stuff that I would be on the lookout for, for having something that this should be about Cirrus viable. It'll be a slow Cirrus kill for sure, but it should be very dependable. This should be like end of the Atlas. You can do tier 14 to T16 maps. You can start smaller. You can start with plus one chaos wands, and then you can go all the way up to Kane of Unraveling, a really, really big staff, an enchanted helmet. So the key here is that we are a Bane build, right? Bane is the core of the build. This is our primary clearing skill. It is actually not our primary single target damage, but the quality of life and what we get from Bane, especially on an occultist, it's hard to overstate, at least for me, for how awesome it is. What Bane is, is it applies a debuff to enemies in an area, so it does not hit and it will apply all of the linked curses to Bane. So the thing to look out for here is you have to make sure that the level of the curse gems is also kept up to date with Bane, right? So you can't have like a level 20 despair linked to a level 15 Bane. You have to make sure both your Bane and your curses are the same level, or, or very close at least, and it will do more damage for each curse linked to Bane. And also the three curses that we choose here, despair, temporal change, and punishment, are all curses that increase our damage a lot as well by the effect of the curse. So we have Bane linked with Despair, Controlled Destruction, Punishment, Temporal Chains, and Void Manipulation. The cool thing here is it's very flexible. Like if you don't even get the right colors, instead of Void Manipulation, you can do everything from Arcane Surge to Life Tap to Efficacy. And based on your preferences and the colors that you get and all that, this is very, very flexible. So the overall play style is we're gonna be walking around casting Bane that will put all of the curses on the enemies. And then if you've played an occultist before, we have Profane Bloom, which says cursed enemies have a 40% chance to explode, dealing a quarter of their life as chaos damage. You know, as soon as we get a couple Profane Blooms going off, then you get, you get really good clear, really good propagation. What's differentiating how I'm putting this together versus how I've done it in the past is I am using a double five link, well, ideally five link. Uh, this is a double four link right now of Essence Drain with Blight, Vol Blight, Controlled Destruction, Void Manipulation, and Swift Affliction. And then ideally we would put in Empower in here, but if we really want, we can put in something like Cruelty. The cool thing here is we actually get two different damage over time skills that are linked together in a single six link. So it's basically, it's a double five link, right? So I decided to check it out, what it feels like with Essence Drain and Blight. And then that opens up a whole bunch of opportunities for variations on the build. For the auras, we really get to mix and match anything that we want. So this is personal taste, and you can modify this based on what you want. Currently in my full League Starter variation, I'm using Defiance Banner, Grace, Vitality, and Malevolence. But as we scale up, as we mix and match based on what you're going for, you can put in whatever you want. Boots, I'm using Flame Dash with Arcane Surge, just Arcane Surge, more spell damage, more damage for us, and Mana Regen is really nice. Defiance Banner, Withering Step here. Ideally, you go for Anomalous Withering Step, which gives us more Wither debuffs. Just really stacks up our damage much quicker. And trying to get up to the maximum of 15 Wither stacks, making those Withers as strong as possible, is one of the most reliable ways for us to scale a lot of damage. Due to the nerfs in Spreading Rot, I no longer recommend using Spreading Rot, which makes Blight uh, apply Wither stacks. And I really strongly recommend just using a Withering Step. And then in the Gloves, Cast on Damage Taken, Molten Shell, and as I said, we're using Defiance Banner, Grace, Vitality, and Malevolence. For the flask, I recommend a Life Flask with immunity to bleeding. I used to use Steel Skin, which would give us bleed immunity, but these days I think we're probably good enough with just a Life Flask that has bleed immunity. Just make sure you're looking out for it and you press that button when you start bleeding. A Jade Flask, and what I really like to do with this build is, as you see, I have immunity to shock, immunity to burning, and then I have these set to use when be you become shocked, and use when you become ignited. And so the key here is I don't really press my flasks. Like I, I don't play this build as if I'm spamming my flask and I assume that I always have flask uptime. I just press my quicksilver 
And I, I want these to be available and to go off for the ailment immunity. Now you could prefer to just kind of, you know, flask, spam your flasks or, you know, however you like to make them automatically trigger. <laughs> um, you know, that's absolutely up to you. But with this build in particular, I really like to make it as button free as possible. Make sure that we can just, you know, press our quicksilver. We're just baiting around and all of the other flasks basically I have going automatically. So a big awesome thing that we can do is to use the forbidden taste flask. So what this says is actually when it's perfectly rolled, recover 100% of your life on use, and you take 25% of your maximum life as chaos damage per second. However, since we're an occultist, actually I don't have my chaos res right now. This flask is actually hurting me <laughs> at the moment. But since we're an occultist, we get 60 chaos res for free. So by investing a little bit into our gear, I do have gear that has chaos res, by trying to cap out our chaos res, Having this trigger when we take a savage hit, which I believe is 15% of your life in a single hit, this will automatically trigger and will recover 100% of our life instantly. Then we'll be taking 25% of our life as chaos damage per second. The key here is you actually don't want to quality up the flask. You don't want it to last any longer. <laughs> if we have 75% chaos res, that's only about 6% of your life per second, which isn't too bad. And being able to get 100% of your life back when you take a big hit and not really have to worry about the downside too much, this flask is an absolute must-have in my opinion. In terms of the passive tree, there isn't anything too crazy here. The key is we want to really make a beeline for Whispers of Doom. As I said, the way that Bane works is it applies all of the linked curses. We want to be able to triple curse. We get plus one curse as an occultist with Malediction. We want to make a beeline for Whispers of Doom. So in Act 3, when we switch over to Bane, we will be able to apply two curses right away and then later on three curses when we get Malediction. After that, we're really going around looking for increased chaos damage, increased effect duration, uh, level of chaos gems, damage over time, uh, and life. There are some variations that you can do with the skill tree, but hopefully it's fairly self-explanatory and any other questions that you might have should be answered in the POB in all of the notes and especially looking through the progression through all the skill trees in there. For anointment recommendations, uh, Hexmaster is really, really good to get early because uh, the way that Bane works is the size of Bane will scale based on its level. So at low level, Bane will be kind of small and feel bad. So Hexmaster, 50% increased AOE feels really, really good early. But later on, I do recommend switching to Corruption. As I said, Wither is one of the best ways to scale damage in this game. We very reliably and easily add Wither stacks to our enemies. And so Corruption is a spectacular way. It's really the best in slot for scaling the damage on this build. An anointment to not take, I, I did see a lot of people doing this in the past, do not take Heart of Darkness. I've seen a lot of people take this. Maybe they think it's just really easy to get. Maybe they think they discovered something that I didn't recommend. But damage penetrates 7% Chaos Res. Penetration only is an effect of hits. We do not hit. This is a full damage over time build. Damage penetrates does nothing for our build. Heart of Darkness is a bad option. This is my rough equivalent of a few days into the league for me. For you, this might be a week into the league, but this should be very achievable, even for solo cell phone players, pretty reliably. So you saw a T14 map with absolute budget gear. What does this look like as we scale it up? First recommendation, as I said, to like really push this build to the next level is gem levels, right? Well, to the next level. <laughs> uh, gem levels are the best way to scale our chaos skills up until about level 30. I believe it's 10 or 15% more base damage all the way up until about gem level 30 with Bane, Blight, and Essence Drain. So something like Empower or going for like a Skin of the Loyal is a really, really good way to just really scale that baseline damage of your, of your build, right? So if we take a look at Essence Drain, right? This is saying 144,000 chaos damage per second. Ignore the other numbers. The, the key number that we want to look at is this one right here. And, you know, obviously this doesn't take into account the curses or wither or anything, but we can use this as a baseline, right? It says 144,000. This is with a level 24 essence strain. Look at this. We put in the empower. Goes up to 201,000 damage. <laughs> so gem levels are a gigantic, gigantic boost to the damage of our skills here. Now, obviously you can go for a level three on league start, unless you get really, really lucky. The key here is because we are double five linking, Empower will affect both Essence Strain and Blight, and it really pushes our damage across the board for both of them. And so you're double dipping on the effectiveness of that jewel. And the next recommendation, and the reason why I didn't put it in my like super budget league starter is because 
we don't know how expensive Ashes of the Stars is going to be. If you played this league, you know that Ashes of the Stars is incredible. It is really, really good. And it was a huge boon to Bane, like a gigantic upgrade to Bane. Because, as I said, gem levels is really good. But also, quality, 30% quality to skill gems. Look at this. Because we are cursing, right? We're triple cursing. And curses are active skill gems. And curses make the enemies take more damage based on their quality. We are triple dipping, quadruple penta dipping. We are using so many active skill gems with Essence Drain, Blight. We have triple curses. We have Bane. Every single one of our auras, we can go for alternative auras that make us do more damage, more quality of life, right? Molten Shell will last longer. It's like you are, you're dipping so much. There's so much dipping. I can't. This is by far, in my opinion, especially because of the quality of life that we get, the number one best in slot amulet. So who knows how much this is going to cost on League Start. It might be more rare in 3.18, but even if it's like 5 or 10 exalts, this is still just going to be your best in slot. So definitely save up for one of these. What next? Well, I would go for a Helm Enchant. Uh, I really like increased effective curses applied by Bane. This will apply to all of our curses, Punishment, Despair, and Temporal Chains makes them all stronger, especially the quality of life, punishment, and temporal chains have defensive layers as well. So it's also, it, it gives us some quality of life for defense in addition. You can go for anything else though. You can go for despair curse effect, bane area of effect, essence strain damage, blight damage. They are all really good for this build. There's like, there's like 15 different enchants that are applicable to this build. In fact, in solo cell found, you could farm up your own chant very, very easily. What next? I would start looking at a body armor here. There's actually quite a few options. Um, I do recommend looking for a Skin of the Loyal right off the bat. The nice thing here is that you get that plus one level of socket of gems, and it kind of, I don't have a red gem in this one, but it'll do plus one to the level of the Empower as well, right? So this, you know, more dipping. <laughs> we get a little bit more dipping there, right? So plus one level of socket of gems, it'll upgrade the Empower, and it'll actually do like the exact same thing as this plus one, plus one here. This is what I've recommended in the past is a an Evasion Energy Shield uh, status garb because previously we were purely ghost dance evasion and ES based as you can see I am recommending more to go into determination really getting some armor bases instead so my one difference based on what I've done in the past here if you want to craft your own body armor go for something like a dragon scale base that gives you really really big evasion and armor as well as allows you to get spell suppression now with that said this is not exactly the best in slot anymore why is that New Eldritch Implicits. The cool thing about this is it opens up the prefixes on our body armor. My new recommendation is just go for a really big, strong body armor with you know a dragon scale base, right? That has really high armor, evasion rating, life. You can go for a veiled prefix for the 10% increased life, uh, T1 life, armor evasion, spell suppression, all of that really good stuff. And then we look at the uh, the Eldritch Implicits here. So as you can see, we can get 30% increased chaos damage here. That's pretty good, but I would probably lean towards 20% curse effect. I think that that's just probably the best in slot here. And so 20% curse effect and 36% malevolence aura effect, that's probably my recommendation on the body armor, but it's absolutely, you know, it's probably not quite as much damage as plus one, plus one, but it's going to be much, much cheaper to go for. And then it gives you more defensive layers by really focusing on all of the explicits on the body armor and not worrying about you know doing woke orbs or influence bases or anything like that. So for the belt, I would upgrade to a Stygian Vise that is a hunter base. You want to throw it into Reforge Life and Reforge Chaos. Now, I did not hit the Chaos modifier on the prefix, but everything else that I hit was good enough, so I stuck on this one. Um, the key here is you want that increased maximum life, Really, really good life. I hit that tier one. And then your third prefix is going to be 20% increased chaos damage. That's basically the only damage node that we can get on a belt. For gloves, I would go for something like this. Uh, a pair of armor evasion bases. Uh, dragon scale gauntlets are the strongest. Going for those Eldritch Implicits. The cool thing here is we get that chaos dot multi. This isn't as strong as going for the apothecaries with chaos dot multi. As you can see, right, this is fire, but chaos would be the same. You can go to 20 chaos dot multi explicit with the 18% increased damage over time implicit, which is going to be more damage, but much harder and more annoying to craft. 
My recommendation, as always, is to start off with something that's a lot easier to get. And then for boots, I would start off with something like really, really good two-tone boots. These should be really, really easy to get. Yeah, and actually, I think a lot of people sleep on this. You can start off with deafening essences of zeal, you know, especially we're going to have essences on the map device next league. You can guarantee 32% increased movement speed on boots. Don't go out there. Don't spend, you know, two exalts buying decent two-tone boots at league start. Just get some deafening essences of zeal and craft your own boots really, really quickly or go to ROG and craft those. And Ziri's steps can be one to two exalts on league start. That They do drop very quickly, but I don't hard recommend these right now versus especially it's going to be much easier for us to craft spell suppression going for those eldritch implicit bases it's zero steps are incredible boots i love them you know if you can get them very easily you know 26 percent spell suppression incredibly good defense there um especially with the this evasion and energy shield mastery plus one es per eight evasion on the boots these are very very high evasion boots and uh as you can see this gives me almost 300 more energy shield so really really good boot there if you can get it series steps absolutely go for it there's nothing wrong with going for a nice armor evasion rating two-tone boot and then obviously i kept the biggest one for last this is the thing that really pushes the damage to the next level and it's <laughs> it's actually really the crux of why this build works at all as we know we're using blight essence strain and bane right three different skills that are spread across multiple pieces of gear to the point where in previous versions of the build, I used to put Blight in the gloves. But the really cool thing is the staff mod says level of all Chaos Spell Skill Gems. And this is why the Cane of Coolmac is not for, good for this build. I, I do see people using Cane of Coolmac, And yeah, sure, your Bane can be higher level or just your Essence Strain can be higher level. But the key with going for the regular staff mods or Cane of Unraveling is it affects all of our Chaos Gems. It even modifies our Withering Step here, which is really cool. You want to go for a Fractured Base that either has plus three level of all Chaos Spell Skill Gems or plus two to level of all Spell Skill Gems Fractured. And I do have a video on this that I'll link in the description below. Uh, I have an entire staff crafting video with its own spreadsheet and everything. You can have a ridiculous staff that will carry you to 15, 20 million DPS, kill everything in the game, and just be like, an absolute powerhouse of the powerhouse of the of the bane as you can see putting this staff on essence drain is level 33 and the damage just gets out of control right remember when we were looking at essence drain before can of unraveling it's at 212,000 damage put on the big boy 344,000 damage this is a another 50 percent more damage from what we had before obviously this is the big boy this is hard to get this is the aspiration but i just want to show like where it can get. With a big boy configuration of this build, we can very reliably get to 15, 20 million DPS. That is totally asynchronous. Our debuffs are lasting, you know, five plus seconds. That is, that's like better than 30 million DPS with like synchronous, right? Very comfortable. The bosses are really slow. This is why I am going to leak start Bane. As the difficulty of bosses increases, Bane becomes even better even better for bossing. And then I just wanted to leave you guys with uh, a little bit of a variation and show you guys what the customization can truly be when you uh, when you stick with the build for a while and you really enjoy it and you think about it for a while. Like I've been playing this build for over a year now, thinking of doing this double five link and opening up the possibility for getting more ores in there, as to the stars, definitely as we start leaning into going into Eldritch Implicits and all of that, the possibilities are, even with builds that might seem like they've been played to death, there can be a new spark of joy and, and like play that you can have within, within that restriction. The thing that I've done here is I actually am using Herald of Ash. So the cool thing about Herald of Ash is if you kill an enemy based on the amount of overkill damage that you're doing with our Profane Bloom, it will actually burn the enemies around it and it can actually lead to a nice propagation of the damage here. In addition to that, we can add a Despair on Hit Ring which, yes, I know we're already casting Despair in our staff here, but the Despair on hit means Profane Bloom will apply Despair, and based on the order of operations of when a monster dies, we can actually get a better propagation of our explosions there. This is a fun little tech that you can do that is absolutely not necessary, but you can drop your Controlled Destruction Gem and put in Awakened Spell Cascade. It ends up casting five different Banes for a single Bane. And so, we can hit the entire screen from a single cast and with the Despair on Hit and the Herald of Ash, we should have a very, very clean clear. Like a complaint that a lot of people have about this build is 
you know, it can be at lower AOE a little extra clicky, right? You're going to be clicking multiple times per screen, trying to hit multiple packs. But uh, with this variation, Awakened Spell Cascade and Herald of Ash, uh, the Despair and Hit Ring is just to clear up, to make the clear a little bit cleaner. Um, you know, you can just hit everything and a single cast and you're clearing, you're clearing the whole screen in a very reliable, clean way. So th this is just to, to demonstrate to you guys what you can do to play around with within a template. And, uh, you know, I really just want to always encourage more play in the template and customizing it and make it, making it for yourself. So just wanted to get that in there towards the end of the video. I really wanted to get enough detail in this video so you could put this build together from the video in addition with the POB if you need to level it. And linked below is also the Bane leveling guide. It's a full video showing how to get from act one to act four. After act four, it's all the same, all the way from four to 10. And it's super easy after that. Um, it's a very reliable, fun, awesome build that I love sharing with you guys. I love hearing you guys really love playing it. And I want to always make sure that you guys have spectacular league starts. There will be plenty of more Bane videos. Don't you worry. <laughs> Get subscribed if you want to follow along and keep up with my updates. As always, I'll see y'all tomorrow.